In Affinity Photo, you can place EPS files into your document. Now you can place them embedded or linked. Personally, I prefer linked. And I'm just gonna delete this one and go to File and down here to Placement Policy. You've got embedded. Now with embedded, it means if you change something later, outside, you've got a different design, you just tweak it, obviously you've embedded it, that's not gonna change. Only will change if you've got it linked. Also, embedded makes the file size a lot larger. So personally, I think linked is fine for most cases. So linked, but of course, everyone will have their own opinion on that. Just go to place to actually place it. So click there. And I'm going to place an EPS file. These ones were created for Photoshop. They're part of a swirl set for Photoshop custom shapes. But these EPS files can be used in most applications. So I'm just going to select this one and click open. And then you can click the document and then you can position it and resize it. And that's file and placement policy and linked. What you can also do, you've got some options here, window and resource manager. Now you might find that very useful. I mean, you might not want to change anything, so it doesn't matter. You might not delete the file, so it won't matter again. Because this linked file, if you remove it, you'll be asked to locate it again. So resource manager, select that. And you can see there, you've got status, OK. It lets you know, OK. Page one, placement, linked. And you can change backwards and forwards. You can go to embedded if you want to at this point. Also, you can show in the finder. You've also got how to collect it. All those sort of things. Obviously, if you're going to package it. And locate in document. So you can do those ones. You can also replace. So I'm just going to click here. Replace. Now, the folder it goes to might not be the same. Obviously, if you're, you've been doing some exports, you've been doing some file save, you might notice it goes off to the desktop instead. So I'm just going to select a different one. Now, unfortunately, my, my Mac doesn't actually show, doesn't have the thumbnail. So all you see is this, EPS, which is not very helpful. You just have to happen to... Now, you can always, of course, rename the EPS files. Click Open. And then it is. It's just change. You might change your mind and say, again, replace, and put it back to the other one. Click open. And you can close that. And that's all via window and resource manager. I'm just going to resize it. Just Now, what you need to do if you're going to apply effects and things, make certain you don't go over the edge. So if you go over the edge, now it doesn't matter here. I mean, if you go over the edge, you're not going to lose anything. It's just, and you can see the, the layer there. But go over the edge and then apply a filter. And I'll show you what happens. Filters, blur, maybe Gaussian. I'm just going to go for Gaussian blur. Now, it's possible that some don't do this, but Gaussian blur. If you and now, if you drag up here, not very handy. And also, you've got this. Now, if you go now to Window, Resource Manager, you'll notice what's happened. It's gone. No longer there, which is not ideal. So undo, make certain you got this. And the best thing to do is apply live filter layers. Now, the one trouble with that, not every effect has those. So you've got filters, you've got loads of great ones like mirror. Unfortunately, that's not available as yet, or if ever, as a live layer. But what you can do, you can go here to effects. So just go to layer, select that layer. Go to effects, click there, and now you can go and add a gradient. Now you can add a gradient as well, outside. You don't have to do it here. But you can just go here, and I find it easier. And the thing is about this is it's reasonably flexible. Not as flexible as it could be. I think the gradient here, would be nice if you could actually click here, and it could bring up your swatches. I'm not certain why it doesn't do that. But still, it doesn't, and that's what it's got. And you can add stops, so you just click on there, and you can change colors. So if you want, say, blue, and you've got your gradient there. And you can change the offset. Again, it's not very interactive, which is very unusual. 
I think for Affinity Photo, one great joy in Affinity Photo is the interactivity. It's got a lot of great interactive features, but here it sort of lets itself down a bit. I don't know why. So you scale it, so, you know, you should be able to do some of these offsets and things just on the screen. You just move it like that, which is not ideal. Also, you've got 3D. So you go for 3D and click close. Now it's still live. So if you decide to change your mind, you go gain window and you can go to resource manager and you can change it. Just replace it, get a different one and so on. But also you can go here to live filter layers. So just click and you can go down and now Gaussian blur, apply it, you got this panel comes up and you can of course there's other ones as well so you don't have to just use this one but I'm just going to use it for example and you've got a blur there the radius so you can set that and also you can go through blend modes which I think is great and you can close the panel but the thing about this is you can always go back to it later so at any point you can always span this out and you've got your design there your, your EPS file expand that and you can just double click that. And again, you can just tweak it. Maybe made the radius a bit too strong. Might want to reduce it down. Just go for something like that and close. And of course you can add additional ones as well. You can add twirls and other displacements, etc. You can also recolor it. You've got adjustments there. So once you've done that, also another thing, if you go over here, the move tool, so you've got the move tool. Now, if you go off the over the edge, and then drag it back, you're not losing it. So that you've got that's a great advantage there. And again, you can still at any point, because of the resource manager, you can go over here, resource manager, you can change it. You can tweak it. Now, if you want to, at any point, you can, of course, just rasterize it. Because there's some things you might want to do, rasterize. So let's go, again, delete that, file and place, and select a different one. I'm not certain which, Unfortunately, because there's no image, just guessing, just clicking there. One luck, that design. Now, at this point, you think, right, well, what I want to do is add a gradient to it. I don't want to add the effects, but I want a filter or something like this. So, gain brush strokes. Now, with brush strokes, you can see what happens there. It will come up with an assistant. Unfortunately, the result doesn't look very good. But one of the best ways to do it, I think, is just go here, select, and then use selection from layer. And that will create a selection based on that design. So let's just go for that, selection from layer. And now you can see that selection. And let's just change the color. So let's just go for something other than black, close, and now with brush. Now you can see, obviously, it's put it inside, and you can play brush stroke. Maybe go for blue and close and apply it like that. So you can create some really great designs inside your EPS design. And of course, you can always select this pixel layer. Just select it like that. Apply some filters. So let's go to filters, distort, and maybe mirror. Now the effect doesn't modify the shape. So number of mirrors you can see inside the actual shape itself. And you can reposition it, move it around. Again, change the number of mirrors. You can see the design there. And click apply. And you, of course, can add other ones as well. But also, you can go to the gradient tool. So select that. And you can then apply the gradient. Now, obviously, it's applied over top of that before, that was there before. Or you can go that direction. Or that direction. You can create all kinds of gradients. But also, what you can do is you can create with patterns. Because you've got up here, you can go, you've got your gradient tool selected. So you can go for bitmap. Select that. Now, unfortunately, the EPS file's not considered to be a bitmap. I think it should. Personally, I think it should work out and rasterize it for you. But it doesn't do it that way. So if you want to use it, you need to convert it before you do anything to a PNG. So just open the file. The EPS file can be opened. With that EPS file, just turn it into a PNG file. And then you can use it here. So that's a great way of creating some really 
wonderful, stunning patterns for your design. So you've got this. Once you've done that, now at this point, I'm going to say select and deselect. And I can move it around. But you can see what happens there. I'm moving the pixel, which is not so, not so brilliant. Go to this and now move that around. So you select that and you can see what happens. It moves that. Again, it's not so great, but makes it, but it's useful actually for that sort of thing if you want to create. But unfortunately, you'll see what happens. It cuts it off. It's got this around here. It just cuts it off. So if you just drag that down, you can see it's cut off again, which you may or may not have a problem with. Also, you can resize it. So you just resize it like that, and you can see the design there. And again, you can always go for filters, blur, Gaussian blur, maybe not so much. You can see then you've got this design here. Again, just select that, and you can move that around. Now you'll notice also, with this, this is the child, the pixel, pixel layer, that blurred gradient design you've got now is a child. So you can actually lock it, just go up here. Lock children. And with that, you can then move this around and it's fr that's frozen. That design you just created, that blurred design, that's frozen, and you can position it there. Again, you can unlock it and then you can move it around. So you can create lots of designs that way. You can also use this as a great source for brush strokes. So you can go and let's just go to window and brushes. And you can see here, got all these options here, newer. Now, new brush from selection. Now at the moment, even though it's selected, it's not a selection, unfortunately. It's very odd. Sometimes it, it is and sometimes it's not. I think that's just always a bit confusing. So again, select, selection from layer. And you've selected that. You can see it's now all selected. Once you've done that, you can go over here again, brushes, right side menu, and again, new brush from selection. At this point, probably the reality is it's not seeing it as, as that. You need to go to layer and rasterize. And in many cases, that's the simple solution. Once you've rasterized it, now, new brush from selection. <clears throat> so you've got new brush from selection and you can then define it as a brush if you want to use it as a brush. And you can then also, if you want, go to layer, new pattern layer from selection. Again, you've got this selection. And you can then create a lovely pattern design very quickly from that EPS file. And you can see there, you can resize it. You can rotate it or shear it. If you move up there, you can see the rotation and rotate the design. And literally thousands and thousands of different designs can be created all via file and place and just place in an EPS file. An EPS file that can be any size. Any size. That's the great thing about EPS files. They're vector designs. Not like PNG. So that and open. And again, click there and you can see sort of design there. And you can resize that, color it, fill it and much, much more. Hope you found this tutorial of interest. Any questions, please let me know in the comments below. Always great to hear from you. Thank you much.